and look how lucky I just got. The infamous blue torch of death saves the day yet again. Now I just did this off camera because the fill plug in there was seized in there solid and I almost stripped it all the way out, which would have been a real bummer. So there's the old one, you can see kind of where I started spinning out of it. And uh, luckily for me and many before me, a little bit of heat is a persuasive thing and I have a replacement fill plug in this differential. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that cool off for a little bit. And I'm gonna fill up the differential with about two quarts of 7590. It already has limited slip additive in it. And if the Auburn unit in this is any good, which I'll give about 50-50 odds of, uh, should be good to go. Uh, hopefully for a while with this rear end anyways. And if anything, it's gonna be a good base where I could just put a locker in it or something like that in the future. But having limited slip is great. And uh, yeah, other than that, this rear end's pretty much ready to go. So I'll pour it a little bit in time fill this thing up, get that unit under the car, and we will have a good running and hopefully good driving third gen after that. So I'm gonna put the torch hose away and get right to it. One quick thing I thought was worth showing is that I've had to modify the new U-bolt clamps that I got because the two that were removed from the car were really, really rusty and one actually broke. They're like two and I think five eighths diameter or something like that is the axle tube diameter. And all I could find was three inch clamps. So what I had to do was actually cut them down quite a ways. You can see the size difference here. I pretty much took out the width of the diameter of the U-bolt uh, here. I cut it, I tapered it or beveled it all the way around so I could fill it all the way in with weld material. But my wire feed speed really slow and I turned the heat up and I got it nice and cherry red here. You can see I've got a pretty wide heat affected zone uh, for only welding, you know, right in here. So overall, I think this is gonna last and stand the test of time. I'll throw a little bit of primer on this and uh, just keep it from rusting or whatever under the car. But this is what I'm gonna have to use because I can't get this stuff without ordering it. I tried to source it locally and this is not an exact muffler clamp size it's uh, for the rear axle tube obviously it's smaller than three inch and bigger than two and a half so without ordering it and paying about 20 bucks for a set of u-bolts i paid four and uh fired up the grinder and welder and i made them myself
All right guys, so over the last couple of nights, everything got dialed in on the car. I got the new proportioning valve spring installed into the proportioning valve from this one. Now, this is the proportioning valve that came with the rear end that came from the 91 Z28. It turns out you don't actually have to replace this whole block. And fortunately that's the case because the thread pitches, I believe are different from 86 to 91 as it were. I forget the years where it actually changes exactly. The first couple of years were something, then it was like 84 to 89, then 80, 90 to 92 or something like that. That's beside the point. But the difference in them is specifically the spring that after doing a little bit of homework and getting some info from the third gen community on one of the Facebook pages, the spring actually acts as a little bit of a pre-tensioner for the rear brakes and on drum brake cars, evidently the wheel cylinders have just a little bit of pressure on them to keep the seals from collapsing or something to that effect. So you actually need less pressure on a rear disc brake car than a drum brake car. If you know for a fact that that's true or not, drop a comment down below. That's just what I heard. I don't personally know whether or not that's the case, but it kind of makes sense, I guess. So whatever the case, how it was actually articulated, like I just did, kind of makes sense because I could hear the rear brakes scrubbing just a little bit when I was driving and it would get louder when I actually hit the brake pedal. So that all kind of makes sense and uh, it seems to track. So at any rate, hopefully when I go for a ride here, we're not gonna hear any more brakes scrubbing on the back. It should be nice and quiet going down the road and we should feel probably the same engagement front to back. And uh, I think today I'm gonna take it out to the track and try and go run around some cones a little bit, set up a little stop box and see what it does. Funnily enough, the last time I went out there with this car is when that pinion bearing went out. So it's actually the last time it had been out there and it's probably been, I don't know, a couple months now and it's before we did pretty much any work out there. So the change out there is pretty dramatic. And I'm really excited to get out there and wheel this sucker around some cones. All right, it's been a few days since getting the rear end reinstalled in the IROC and getting it all tightened down and sorted out. But overall, the car feels really good and I'm headed out to the racetrack right now. What better way to go try it all out than on your own racetrack? So I'll be out there in a couple of minutes. I get to do some more trimming and stuff. And I think the porta pot is getting prepped for this weekend when we're gonna have our first show out there. And hopefully it's gonna be successful. It looks like there's gonna be quite a few people going. And anyways, I'll check up with you guys when I get everything set up out on the track. see what the car's got after a couple of little warm-up laps we're actually returning to the place that the car technically died which is kind of funny I'm gonna see if I can redeem it a little bit Go around a little bump over there and this is a very basic setup Just a little bit of a slalom it's a little tight you can almost open it up some braking zone more of a second gear deal. doesn't like corners. It's funny, it did that last time. It's like it stars for fuel on corners and breaks up a little bit. I'm not quite sure why that is. Hear that? It stutters. Oh, one cone. set cones here I'm thinking so one two I hit the same two a couple of times unfortunately but oh well I'll set them back up do one more run 
minor adjustment for distances because it was a little bit snug. I don't think I'm going to carry as much speed through here. This car really does not like the corners. So we'll start out in the right gear. Skip over that starvation issue. I don't want to leave nothing out. You know, cause a problem. Let's carry some speed through here. Understeer. <laughs> That's new. Might be too tight. If I had to guess. Also, more than likely going too fast through that segment, so. Well. interesting it didn't do that before the tail end would kind of come around <laughs> there's something rattling up through the headliner <laughs> car's got more power but I really can't use it here feels good. Check out the brakes real quick. <laughs> and just like that, we're done. running all right i don't know put down a little bit of smoke but i think it's just from killing it so the iroc lives to see another day the umi control arms feel good in the back rear end felt planted and centered and everything you'd really expect from it i couldn't really tell if the limited slip was working all that great but the car also has one really bald tire and one not so bald tire so maybe a little differentiation from the left to right side might be accounting for that for not that perfect grip feel because one tire has less traction of course Anyways, I got to go work on the Porta Pot a little bit because this weekend we are having our first car show out here and drifting exhibition from Ryan and Dan. And other than that, not too much else to do. I'll be cleaning up cones, taking a little thumbnail picture, and I'll be out of here for the night. Hope you guys liked today's video. The Camaro is running great. It's going to stay on the channel. I really do like this car, and it serves a great purpose out here now that I have the track. We'll see you guys in the next video.